I'm Professor Kenneth Hansen of the University of Central Florida Judaic Studies Program, and I'd like to share, with a little help from AI, some important insight about the most horrific genocide in all of human history, the Shoah, otherwise known as the Holocaust. In this case, focusing on the first conference called by the SS in December 1941 to comply with an order from Hermann Goering to eliminate the Jews of Europe. It was postponed for technical reasons, but on January 20th, 1942, the conference finally convened in a Berlin suburb in a place called Am Grosen Wannsee. Meanwhile, the Jews of Nazi-occupied Europe, who had already been forced into overcrowded ghettos, knew nothing of the ultimate exterminatory aims of the Nazis. My name is Estera. My husband Samuel and I, along with our two daughters, Regina and Helena, and two sons, Henrik and Władysław, were sent to the Warsaw Ghetto and later transported here to a place of horror called Treblinka. Władysław is a brilliant pianist performing on Polish radio before the Nazis invaded our country. He was in the line to be deported here with the rest of us, but was pulled from the line at the last minute. We hope he is still alive in Warsaw, while the rest of our family stares death in the face every day. When the war broke out, we knew very little, only that the Allied powers declared war on Germany. We naively thought it would all be over soon. What we didn't know, what we couldn't know, was what the Nazis had been planning for us. Not just murder, but mass murder. Somebody had to give the order. Who was it? Hitler? Or somebody else? As for me, I never saw my mother, father, brother or sisters again, even though I managed to survive the war. Pulled from the line of those being transported to Treblinka, I was able to work as a laborer under the Nazis, until I managed to escape the ghetto. With the help of partisans, I moved from flat to flat in Warsaw, hiding out until the Germans were finally crushed by the advancing Red Army. Only later did I learn about the Wannsee Conference. Only later did I realize the extent of the plan to exterminate us, all of us, not just in Poland, but everywhere. At the Wannsee Conference, Reinhard Heydrich, second in importance to Heinrich Himmler in the Nazi SS, laid it all out. Another possible solution of the problem has now taken the place of emigration. That is, the evacuation of the Jews to the east. Provided that the Führer gives the appropriate approval in advance. In the course of the practical execution of the final solution, Europe will be combed through from west to east. Germany proper, including the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia, will have to be handled first due to the housing problem and additional social and political necessities. The evacuated Jews will first be sent to so-called transit ghettos, from which they will be transported to the east. It is not intended to evacuate Jews over 65 years old, but to send them to an old age ghetto. Theresienstadt is being considered for this purpose. In addition to these age groups, of the approximately 280,000 Jews in Germany proper and Austria on 31 October, 1941, approximately 30% are over 65 years old. Severely wounded veterans and Jews with war decorations will be accepted in the old age ghettos. The beginning of the larger evacuations will largely depend on military developments. Regarding the handling of the final solution in those European countries occupied and influenced by us, the appropriate expert of the Foreign Office will discuss the matter with the responsible official of the Security Police and SD. In Slovakia and Croatia the matter is no longer so difficult. In Romania the government has also appointed a commissioner for Jewish affairs. In order to settle the question in Hungary, it will soon be necessary to force an advisor for Jewish questions onto the Hungarian government. With regard to Italy, consider it opportune to contact the chief of police with a view to these problems. In occupied and unoccupied France, the registration of Jews for evacuation will in all probability proceed without great difficulty. When it comes to the annihilation of the Jews of Europe, everyone focuses on the Vanzi Conference. But many questions linger. Who gave the actual order to exterminate 6 million Jews? When was it given? 
at Vanze, or at some other time. Who was ultimately responsible? Did Hitler personally order the genocide? Would there have been a holocaust but for Adolf Hitler? Do we have any written documents from Hitler ordering the mass murder? Was there ever an order of the Führer? A so-called Führer Befehl? Oddly enough, it's very difficult to link the genocide with Hitler himself. Some ask, might it have been a group decision? Might others have been involved in that decision? Who might have belonged to such a group? There was of course, Heinrich Himmler, head of the SS, considered by many to have been the architect of the actual genocide. Some say Himmler gave flesh and bones to Hitler's plans. Consider for example Project Lebensborn, in which pure Aryan women were sent off with Nazi officers to spawn a new master race. The program was Hitler's brainchild, but Himmler carried it out. Might the genocide have proceeded similarly? Hitler dreaming it up, and Himmler enacting it. After all, following November 1939 and Kristallnacht, it was Himmler who had sole jurisdiction over the Jewish question. Nor was Himmler sitting in an office like a good bureaucrat. He was out in the field, actively overseeing the killing. But how could he, the one who gave the order, when he wasn't even at the Wannsee conference? Who was present? The meeting was led by Reinhard Heydrich. Heydrich was one of 14 SS generals directly beneath Himmler. Heydrich was head of the RSHA, the security main office, part of which was the SD, the security service. Heydrich was the most powerful single individual after Heinrich Himmler. He was the one man who actually looked the part of an Aryan. Tall, blonde, and blue-eyed. But in spite of the fact that Heydrich chaired the Wannsee conference, he was not in charge of the death camps. Heydrich certainly was responsible for the Einsatzgruppen, the mobile killing squads who murdered over one million Jews on the Russian front at the beginning of the German invasion of the Soviet Union. Yet, Heydrich was assassinated before the full scope of the mass murder came about. Also at Wannsee was Heinrich Müller, head of the notorious Gestapo, the political secret state police of Nazi Germany. Müller was directly involved in the extermination of the Jews. Then there was Adolf Eichmann, a German-Austrian Nazi official and officer of the SS. Perhaps no one beside Adolf Hitler was as obsessed with killing Europe's Jews than he. Other Vance participants included secretaries of state, interior, justice, the four-year plan, which was Goering's ministry, two top officials of the ministry for the occupied eastern territories, the undersecretary of the foreign office, and top representatives of the party chancellery, the Reich chancellery, and the race and resettlement main office. Then there was Josef Buhler, deputy of Hans Frank, who was head of the general government of Nazi-occupied Poland. It was Hans Frank who instituted a reign of terror against the civilian population here in Poland, and became directly involved in the mass murder of the Jews. He engaged in the use of forced labor and oversaw four of the death camps, including this one, Treblinka. Heydrich reported on the steps taken to solve the Jewish question. He reported on Jewish emigration from the German Reich, which had reached 537,000. Heydrich centered his discussion on a statistical table that indicated a European Jewish population of 11 million. All would be included in the final solution. There was Alfred Rosenberg. Rosenberg was an influential member of the Nazi party, who held several important governmental posts and who is considered one of the main authors of key Nazi ideological creeds, including its racial theory. Still, it's fair to ask whether the Holocaust would ever have come about without the maniacal determination of Hitler and Hitler alone to perpetrate genocide. Getting into Hitler's mind is no easy task. But it's clear that for him, anti-Semitism amounted to a religion of sorts. For him it brought about a perverse kind of redemption. Call it redemptive anti-Semitism. It sounds bizarre, but he believed that this form of racism would redeem humanity. We can even make a case that he saw himself as a kind of messiah. He harbored a messianic complex, as though he were a god. Bear in mind, Hitler wore glasses, but never in public. He was not married, and the public knew nothing of his mistress Eva Braun. After all, who could marry a god? 
and, as he wrote in Mein Kampf, he was, by defending himself against the Jew, doing the will of the Almighty. And while he dictated Mein Kampf to his deputy, Rudolf Hess, he was definitely the author of every word. So devoted was he to his anti-Semitism that his friends even said that if Hitler ever invites you to dinner, don't mention the Jews or he'll start ranting. Putting all of this together, it's well possible to argue that, notwithstanding the many leaders of the Nazi party, Hitler was almost single-handedly responsible for the genocide. That he was the motivating factor. But we still have to ask, when was the intention to murder the Jews of Europe actually established? Was it in Hitler's mind as early as Mein Kampf? Or did it evolve? This is where we encounter the division among Holocaust scholars between intentionalists and functionalists. The latter argued that the genocide came about as an outgrowth or function of the Second World War. In other words, World War II was a prerequisite of sorts for the Holocaust. Intentionalists argued that mass murder was the clear intent of Adolf Hitler all along. And extreme intentionalists argue for the earliest possible date with regard to when the idea of genocide was actually hatched. Consider the testimony of retired Major Josef Hell, who had been a journalist in the 1920s and early 30s. He recorded that he met with Hitler in 1922 asking, what do you want to do to the Jews once you have full discretionary powers? Hitler supposedly responded, Once I am really in power, my first and foremost task will be the annihilation of the Jews. As soon as I have the power to do so, I will have gallows built in rows, as many as traffic allows. Then the Jews will be hanged indiscriminately, and they will remain hanging until they stink. They will hang there as long as the principles of hygiene permit. As soon as they have been untied, the next batch will be strung up, and so on down the line, until the last Jew in Munich has been exterminated. Other cities will follow suit until all Germany has been completely cleansed of Jews. How authoritative is this source? How accurate? If Hitler really declared that early that he intended to exterminate the Jews, it would be a huge point for the intentionalists. Of course, we do have Hitler's words in Mein Kampf, which, while they don't mention extermination, certainly illumine his mindset toward the Jewish people. Whenever the decision on mass murder was taken, how did it move from ideology to practice? Was it a mere function of bureaucracy? Was there a power struggle between different groups as a result of which the final solution evolved? And from the point of view of the intentionalists, it's fair to ask, how do we define intent? Did talk of genocide in the abstract indicate a clear plan to carry it out? And if there were a plan, where is the documentation? Another problem is that in July 1943, Hitler's private secretary, Martin Bormann, issued an order that any document referring to the final solution be destroyed. Nevertheless, the original order may well have been an oral command to begin with. After all, Hitler didn't need to give written orders. His word was enough. We should recall Hitler's prophecy speech of January 30, 1939, which could be used as evidence. In it, Hitler basically said, if war, then the annihilation of the Jews. As we witnessed in Warsaw the outbreak of World War II, Hitler's intention became firm, even though we didn't know its extent. But it wasn't until Germany's invasion of Russia that a turning point in Hitler's mind seemed to have been reached. From the Nazi viewpoint, it was easier to begin there than in a more civilized country, such as in Western Europe. Moreover, the fog of war provided perfect cover for the mass murder of all of us Jews. And that's evidence for the functionalists. 
It's also curious that at the Wannsee conference, it was declared that Europe will be combed of Jews from west to east. But in reality, it was just the opposite. The genocide began far to the east in Russia and proceeded westward. Whether we agree with the intentionalists or the functionalists, the one thing worth doing is to tie the genocide to Hitler himself via a series of meetings that we know took place. February 24, 1941. Four people met in Berlin. Hitler, Himmler, Göring, and Rosenberg. The meeting was logged, but we don't know what was discussed. There may have been an oral command to exterminate the Jews. April, 1941. The Einsatzgruppen, the mobile killing squads of the SS, were formed. June 17, 1941. A debriefing in Berlin. A progress report on the extermination. In addressing the heads of the Einsatzgruppen, Heydrich declared orally that this comes from Hitler himself. No obstacle should be placed before the efforts at purging undertaken by anti-communist or anti-Jewish circles in the territories soon to be occupied. On the contrary, they should be helped to occur, without leaving any trace. They should be intensified, if necessary, and channeled in the proper direction. But without the local self-protection units later being able to refer to any orders or any political aims and objectives that had been laid down. In other words, the command to commit genocide was not to be written down, so that no trace would be left. There, however, are records of a meeting in July 16, 1941 between Hitler, Göring, Wilhelm Keitel, Hans Lammers and Martin Bormann. It was after this meeting that Göring ordered Heydrich to devise the overall plan. On July 31, 1941, Göring sent the following order. To Gruppenführer Heydrich. Supplementing the task assigned to you by the decree of January 24, 1939, to solve the Jewish problem by means of emigration and evacuation in the best possible way according to present conditions. I hereby charge you to carry out preparations as regards organizational, financial, and material matters for a Gesamtlösung, total solution, of the Jewish question in all the territories of Europe under German occupation. Where the competency of other central organizations touches on this matter. These organizations are to collaborate. I charge you further to submit to me as soon as possible a general plan of the administrative material and financial measures necessary for carrying out the desired Endlösung, final solution, of the Jewish question. Here, final solution is used for the first time to describe mass murder, our mass murder. And so, my parents, brother and two sisters were sent to Treblinka and never emerged. Göring's order, you might say, is the most damning single document prior to the Wannsee conference. It's the closest thing we have to a Führerbefehl, an order of the Führer. Through all this it's clear that the final solution wasn't conceived at the Wannsee conference. The order was Hitler's, and Hitler's alone. He gave it. He was the motivating factor. How early was his actual intent to implement genocide? That's the lingering question. In the final analysis, are the intentionalists or the functionalists right? On that, the jury is still out.